Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, girls and all of who, uh, all of people who are watching now are us here at the Sharjah Academy for Astronomy, Space Sciences and Technology. This is our virtual planetarium show, the weekly planetarium show, uh, virtually uh, with Zoom. And uh, what we do here is we try to continue our planetarium shows uh, in uh, this situation in COVID-19, uh, as you know, and we hope to be there in this place, the planetarium, uh, where it is equipped with very high technology, uh, which accommodates about 200 people at about 18 meters dome. So we hope all of us to be there soon to see our planetarium shows and see the universe. Uh, today, as usual, we would like just to, to see the, uh, the sky as it can be seen from Sharjah or from cities here in the UAE. Uh, we know the sky is very light polluted in the cities where we cannot see the faint stars. So the only way to see the actual stars is to go away from the, the city, uh, I mean, to the desert or somewhere very far from the cities. Maybe the other way is to, to come to the planetarium uh, when it opens, of course. Uh, and that's maybe the best solution to see the universe with, 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 with movies. Uh, now, with my colleague uh, Amr Al Ansari, uh, scientific guide at the planetarium and the space uh, exhibitions, and myself, Marwan Shuwaiki, the director of the planetarium and space exhibitions at SAST, the Sharjah Academy for Astronomy and Space Sciences, we would like to take you through a journey from, uh, from the Earth to the outer space to see. Uh, the universe to study everything in the universe, or most of things to, to see them, but we would like to focus on one uh, important uh, object, which is the closest one to the Earth, and uh, maybe without it, would not be here. Maybe to talk even. That's our moon, the Earth's only satellite which is estimated to about quarter or even more than a quarter of Earth's diameter. So why it is there and uh, how did we, uh, did we travel to the moon and when uh, the challenges. And we would like also to have uh, a focus or to have a st study on the, on the surface of the moon to see how the moon's uh, surface would look like and the details uh, on the moon uh, and if uh, we have a chance we would like also to see the, the moons of the other planets uh, I will start from uh, from the, the sky itself to see the constellations the constellations are really beautiful uh, objects or beautiful sorry uh, figures uh, we, we can see uh, in the sky. Now we are in the outer space and I would like to to land and from, from the outer space now, I'd like to land on the Earth and in particular on Sharjah. So let's do it together. is not working but we will try to go again just a minute to do that manual which is 
So we need to find our place, which is here. We see here the earth, as you see, the, the, the night side and the day uh, side. We are here. This is the UAE is here. You see the lights in this place. So the countries are here. They are at the sunset time from, from this place. Uh, we see this actually is not straight from the uh, south to the uh, north, the, the line I mean between the night and, and daytime, because it is summertime. Summertime it comes this way, but uh, when it is, uh, when it is uh, winter, this becomes actually uh, the opposite actually. Uh, they, it will be like this, but daytime that will be here like this. So now, now, so let's land. Let's first try to put charger at the center for the here. Oh, your E. I'm trying to see the the right. I will show you what I'm doing here. So this is the latitude and longitude. So I just would like to put the latitude and longitude of, of charger. Uh, I will not do that very precisely because it doesn't matter where any place close to charger. The latitude uh, at UAE, I mean in general, is about uh, 24.5 degrees, 30 minutes, which is 0.5. And the the uh, longitude is about uh, twenty fifty five point 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 uh, eight. This is approximately. And now, so let's just go to 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 charger. To, let's do it together or to the UAE. We are on the Earth, but I uh, would like to see the North direction first. We are facing the, the North. We can see the constellations. I will show the constellations to be able to, to for the audience to recognize the, the, the shapes of the constellations. Here are the, the constellations. Uh, as you see, we can uh, see uh, the little depot. This is the little depot, which is part of the Arsa Minor. We see surrounding the little depot, there is a, a monster, which is Draco. The dragon is, is, is surrounding it, as we see. And uh, you see here also uh, the, the Big Dipper, which consists of seven stars, just like the Little Dipper. Those uh, seven ones actually is called the, 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 big, the, the big Dipper, uh, which is actually part of a, a larger constellation, which is the bear, the, the, the big bear, the great bear, or the Arsa Major. We see here its head. Here, its uh, leg, its body, two legs here, and it uh, and the tail. So this is as the ancients imagined uh, the the arson. I will show you uh, how how that actually uh, how they imagined th those those shapes. Here is the 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 arson major, uh, the big the bear, or the, so the 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 big bear, and this is the arsa minor. This is also the one I mentioned, which is Draco, the dragon. We see also many other constellations. Here, for example, is, uh, is part of, of Leo. 
the, the, the famous constellation Leo. We will see that uh, actually uh, from, maybe from, from the sky. We see Hercules is here uh, as well, very famous uh, constellation. Uh, I would like now uh, to, uh, to go again to the outer space. Uh, so let's see how uh, the, the constellation would look like from the outer space. And from there, would like to, to, visit, to visit the moon and to land on the moon, try to land, to, to come very close to it. So let's now go away from uh, the Earth. Uh, and see the, the, the outer space. We are leaving the Earth. This is our planet, the Earth. If we speed up time, then we'll be able to see how the day and night uh, move. So let me just increase the time. Now, you see this is uh, about one hour. Uh, and, and the reality is one second on the machine, very quick. As you see, now the night is actually is covered most of the east. Now, this is very, very quick simulation for the day and, and, and night. Uh, if I speed this up, actually, you see here, as you know, is north and this is uh, south. So let me push it a bit this way. You see this actually is the day night line tilted this way. However, if we speed up uh, to see different seasons, that will vary actually, will not be straight. Okay, so Let's skip this point and try to see our closest object, the moon. The moon is about 400,000 kilometers away from us. And uh, that is about 400 times, 400 times uh, closer, closer from, from the sun. The sun is about 150 million kilometers away from us. Uh, so where is the moon? Let me try to, to, to show the moon. Let's go away from the Earth. We travel away from the Earth to be able to see the moon's orbit. So this is the journey from the Earth to the moon, which actually took place in 19... 69, that is the Earth and the Moon. Okay, now I will enlarge the size of the Earth and the Moon to see them uh, and uh, better for this scale actually right now. So this is about 10 times larger as you see, as the Earth is 10 times and the Moon is 10 times larger. But this is not the, 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 the reality. Uh, so this is out to, is, is, is not to scale. So uh, just to see them. And uh, now we actually uh, running time faster. So we can see the, ch the change in 
the motion, then the location of the moon on its orbit around the Earth. Uh, now I will, uh, while I show this, I would like to invite uh, my colleague Amr Al Ansari to to talk about the moon. Amr, are you there? Yes, uh, Mr. Marwan. Hello, everyone. Okay, thank you. So, Amr, uh, you know, actually, the the journey to the moon was not an easy task for Hume. So that actually, you know, uh, required uh, very, very huge uh, rockets, which is Saturn V, I think. Yeah, uh, of course. For many attempts and uh, many projects before Apollo, even the Gemini and Mercury. So to put the first man on, on the moon. So if you can summarize that in uh, seven minutes, how how that took place, please, uh, to, to, to us, please. Uh, hello, everyone. First of all, I'm very happy to, uh, to, be, with, to be with you uh, uh, through this uh, show. Thank you, Mr. Moron, for the invitation. And uh, actually, uh, traveling to the, the, the moon, one of the most interesting uh, things that uh, happened most people or let's say some people uh think that we jumped to the moon in 1969 like this we went to the moon for the first time and we jumped uh without any preparation or suddenly uh some people uh, uh saw the uh, neil armstrong when he uh, was talking uh, uh from the moon about his journey but before that actually at least uh, uh, 10 years of work just to make this joint leap uh, let's uh, uh, let me share some slides just to give you a hands about what was happening before 1969 so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll share now uh, some of the the uh, slides Yes, I'm going now. So we will start, let's say, after the World War II, as you know. Uh, space race, something was known at the time after uh, World War II, known as a space race. Between whom? Between two nations, let's say the United States on the other side and the Soviet Union. But what we have now, those people, those two or the two scientists we see here, this one is yeah. Sergei Kirillov. Could, could, could you just uh, run run the this full full presentation, please? Full screen, what would be okay. better? Okay. okay, I think this is better now. So we have Sergei Kirillov, the chief designer, as he was uh, known and we have Vernon Brown the man who designed V2 uh, rocket or the first rocket to go to uh, or to cut uh, long distance around uh, 200 or 300 kilometers from place to another so two nations were competing to conquer or to dominate the outer space let's start from Vernon Van Brown and this is the shape of the rocket, as you know, to go to the outer space. You don't need an aeroplane or a vehicle. You need a rocket with very powerful engine. So this is the first model of rocket that we know, V2 rocket, uh, designed by the, uh, uh, the, the scientist Werner Van Braun, who uh, uh, left Germany uh, in the last, or in 1945, to the United States. Uh, he escaped, of course, from the from the war at that time. To what? To achieve his dream. He dreamed to go to the outer space using a rocket. The target was to go to the moon, but to go to the moon, you need to do many things before. The Russians or the United uh, the the Russians, or the Soviet Union, actually in 1959, they had a program. They sent 
uh, the first satellite, Sputnik 1, then the first living uh, thing, Laika, the dog, in 1955, uh, 57, Yuri Gagarin, the first man to orbit around the Earth. It, it was incredible, unbelievable for the Americans. The Soviet uh, uh, did it before them. So they went to, to, to develop their tools. Luna that we have here because they the target the main target not to go to the outer space but to, to travel to the moon so we have here one of the the the, the great uh, space program Luna Luna many many uh, uh, journeys to the the moon uh, designed by the Soviets also but all are spacecrafts uh, not an uh, not manned uh, missions. Uh, now the U.S., the United States, they sent many programs to the outer space to study the outer space, to know what if it, uh, the outer space will be dangerous or not. We want to know about the pressure, the temperature, and the radiation. We want to check everything. We want to take photo of the moon to design, and and this is the huge machine that uh, was used, Saturn V or the the engine. The rocket, the huge, look at the scale. They used this one uh, without the, the, this rocket. Going to the moon was impossible. So huge technology. They developed it, the uh, uh, United States or the, the, the Americans. Not, here is, you can see here Apollo, Apollo 10 and Apollo 11. But before Apollo space program, we have two manned uh, space uh, uh, program. We have Gemini and Mercury, and those two actually what uh, were to prepare uh, to to teach ourselves how to deal with the outer space, to make docking, to check everything, to go around the Earth, to make an orbit, and also to reach the the moon. Before Apollo eleven, they went in Apollo eight. They they make a, an orbit around the moon. They took photographs and image of everything to determine wh wh which location exactly we want to, to land on. Then in Apollo 11, uh, Neil Armstrong and Bob Aldrin walked in the moon. We, uh, uh, we have visited the moon uh, several times, not only Neil Armstrong. Twelve astronauts have walked on the moon, but the first one uh, was Neil, Neil Armstrong, of course. To, to talk about the moon itself, why? was the moon uh, an important target because it is the nearest uh, object to our earth if we want to to test our ability in developing in uh, um, developing technology and everything we we choose to go to the moon also as i told you in the beginning it was like a competition between the two nations at that time the united states and the uh the the russians or the soviet union here is a map of the moon let me talk about it the moon from uh, from earth it looks uh, pretty uh shiny but when you use a telescope uh from earth you will see some dark areas and some craters too so the surface of the moon it has no atmosphere it has dark areas uh which uh, are known as seas or oceans as you see here, the, the names and also craters. Uh, if we move to the uh, Uniview, Mr. Moron, please just to need to, to check uh, the moon uh, itself, to go to the moon to, to see, uh, to take a very close look at the surface of the moon using the, uh, the Uniview. Mr. Mr. Moron, are you there? Yes, yes, just a minute. I will now share the, the, the program. Just a minute. Okay, so till now, some people still uh, denied what happened in 1969 and what after. Why? This is the, the question. You might hear about them, you might read about that one, because um, I think for two reasons. Number one, some people... Uh, love to to believe the, the the theory of conspiracy like everything is faked everything is a lie you know they lie to us they nothing is right and something like this and uh, 
the second reason uh, not all people actually uh, know the uh, space technology and how it uh, it, 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 it runs because uh, it is, it is it, one of the most uh, developed technology actually when we talk about space technology you need to know physics you need to know uh, how satellites uh, work uh, rockets and all of this stuff so as you see we are getting uh, closer and closer to the surface of the moon so as you see here this is the dark area which were uh, were seen by for the first time by Galileo he, he thought this one uh, um, maybe ocean or sea like most people after him but as you see there's many creatures here and those creatures were caused by collisions what collisions collision of asteroids and comets uh, in the beginning of the formation of the solar system it was a mess oh many or maybe millions of asteroids millions of uh, comets were running and were you know floating uh, randomly in the uh, in the outer space at that time, the, 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 the moon was formed, of course, the Earth, and asteroids, comets, and other small objects started to hit the surface of the moon for millions of times. Why don't we have some craters like this, uh, like this on Earth? We have, but because on Earth, actually, we have the, the atmosphere and we have the, the nature of the planet itself, uh, changed the service and uh, moved or whiffed the craters. But we have here the craters. They have names, by the way, named after famous scientists. More than twenty Islamic. But, but scientists. maybe, maybe, maybe we are lucky. Amr also we are lucky to have uh, the moon there to protect the air to receive most of these collisions, uh, not the earth yeah, itself. Yeah, of course. And die. Yeah. So we, we, we can consider uh, our, our moon as a shield or as a protector. But that yeah. maybe was in the, in, the, in the past. But will it uh, happen again in the future? I hope so. <laughs> uh, hey, you, so. Know, you know that the, the dinosaurs, uh, including more than 70% uh, of the species on the Earth, have disappeared about 65 million years ago. Yeah because of a great collision uh, impact uh, by yeah. maybe a great comet or a great uh, asteroid. Yes. So this theory is, is very acceptable. Indeed. Uh, and this uh, scientific medium, you know. Uh, so maybe we don't know if this will happen again, but yeah. it happened. It happened and there is many evidence. So such uh, collisions here is uh, something to tell us uh, the universe is not so quiet as we think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but such uh, impacts actually, uh, um, as we know in our history, in after science or after all the the, the equipments and the tools the, we have, we did not record you know these collisions uh, with the moon, at least big one. Uh, regard, let's let's talk about um, the moon for the last uh, another two minutes. As as we, we mentioned, both critters have names, and uh, uh, the the moon itself. We we went to the moon several times. Uh, uh, Apollo seventeen was the last journey, and we were not going to stop. NASA declared that or announced that. And in, in, in 2024, they have a space program called Artemis. Artemis is a space uh, program to go to the moon and what? To make a colony there, to build um, uh, uh, something there, to stay there. Uh, maybe they, they want to use the resources of the moon and prepare themselves to go to the, uh, the, the, the next uh, destination which is Mars because to jump from the moon to the outer space is uh, easier than from Earth because the gravity is there on the moon uh, is one uh, is, is less than the gravity of Earth. Anyway, um, yeah, this what I want to uh, mention about the moon. It is not the only moon in the solar system, as you know. Earth has one moon. Mercury and Venus 
have no moons, but the other planets, uh, uh, Pluto including, who include Pluto, all have uh, have moons around. So, um, what do you have, Mr. Morwan? This everything will maybe. Thank, thank you very much. Can uh, jump uh, to the depth of the universe. With yes, you? yes, exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Thanks. really uh, good and quick presentation about the moon and how we travel to the moon. And just I'd like to to add one thing. Now, after long time of. Uh, uh, of quiet uh, con uh, regarding visiting the moon so maybe the new projects uh, as you said Artemis project maybe in the five or six coming years five, four or five years uh, to take the first woman to the moon because the 12 people who landed on the moon who put their, their steps on the moon were uh, Americans and men so maybe Artemis uh, as per the, the mythology, because Artemis is the sister of Apollo in the mythology, maybe yeah. that will take the first lady woman to the moon, which is really great. So we hope that will be a successful. Idea. Yeah, but I, I don't want to, some uh, girls or women to, to be angry with that. If we mention that the 12 of the astronauts who walked on the moon were men, because this is uh, regarding the, the science also. Consider, let's take the, the physiology of uh, uh, the, the body of woman in consideration. So that one uh, based on science, not, uh, not yeah. anything. But there are many of scientists, you know, are women. And this we will focus on this maybe in uh, one of our uh, future uh, shows about uh, women in astronomy. Of course. of course, yeah. Very important to much because many discoveries have been actually not be, be uh, uh, discovered without uh, great efforts being uh, done by by astronomers, lady astronomers. Indeed. Okay, I, I'm I'm leaving now the the, the Earth and uh, the Moon. Uh, I will enlarge the size of them to see uh, how that actually compared to the solar system. This is actually the Earth and the Moon. Let's uh, read even more. Uh, before we see the other moons, I'd like to take our audience to the solar system uh, to see the, the, how the, the planets orbit uh, the sun. So let's put the, the, the sun uh, at the center of, of the, the screen. This is actually we see one constellation, which is called a uh, crater, actually. While well, I was uh, showing the craters of the moon, one crater of the constellations have been uh, sh shown here. Okay, so this is the solar system. I will uh, speed up to see how they orbit uh, the, the sun. I will use one day uh, in the reality to equal one second in the machine here. Look how fast they will uh, look like. Uh, the size of, of the planets is too small to see them actually uh, compared to the size of the sun. So not easy to see the planets you need, you know, big telescopes. However, uh, we have a track here. I would like to, to enlarge again the Earth and the planets so we be able to, to see them from this or in this scale. Now, I will use 1,000 times. That's the multiplication I will use for, for this purpose. So now, look, the Earth is 1,000 times as it, it should be and the same about uh, Mars, uh, here is Venus and Mercury, but the sun is as usual. If we enlarge the, the size uh, of the sun on the screen 1,000 times, it will occupy maybe bigger than the screen itself. So this is why we would like to just use uh, this here. Okay, so now, uh, 
how many moons in the solar system? Till now, uh, there is actually uh, about uh, more than 180 moons, or maybe now maybe 200 moons in the solar system. I have not counted them yet. I have to, cal to calculate, uh, but it's not difficult. Uh, but most of the moons are not orbiting the planets that close to the sun, the rocky planets. If we have, actually, if we look at the moons, we see them orbiting the gaseous planets and away from the sun. So there is something to have to, to this a, a question. So why the, the, the moons are not as big, the number of the moons are not as big as the ones uh, at, uh, away from, uh, far from the sun. For example, uh, Mercury and Venus, even they don't have any moons. However, the Earth, it does, it has one single moon. But remember, the moon that orbits the Earth is too large, too large to the Earth, okay, uh, for the Earth. Uh, it's, if we scale this to the other moons, uh, scale to their planets. Uh, the, the, for example, uh, the largest moon orbits uh, Jupiter, which is a, a Ganymede, is actually is a fraction, a fraction of, of its size, nothing. The same when we talk about Saturn, Uranus, and, and, and uh, Neptune. And even when we talk about Mars, there are two moons. We will visit all of that, by the way. Well, the two moons, but they are very tiny, very, very tiny compared to the planet itself. So there is a secret. Why? Maybe this the answer will answer everything. Why the first two planets don't have any moons? Why the Earth managed to keep its moon from the way, while it's close? And why the most of the blue, the moons are there very far away from the sun? So let's come closer to the to the Earth, and uh, Amr would like please to to talk more about this. Please feel free. This is Mercury. Amr, are you there? Amr, are you there? <clears throat> yes, I think yes. I got a problem with the mic. Uh, okay, so uh, did you hear us? Did you hear um, me? The last one minute, I don't know. I, I uh, okay, know. so my, my, my question is, uh, so why... Did you hear me properly? Yes, yes. My voice? So yeah. The God. question is, why we don't have moons... Yeah. around moon Mercury and Venus. Close, very oh. close uh, in this to the sun. Uh, yeah. There is absence of the moons, you know, but only one large moon is there. So it's something like... Uh, locking so it's locked with its earth because of yeah. the size but but uh, so there is something what is what yeah. is so, done with this sun? so what is the secret uh, yeah. yeah so l let's uh, use the the screen now or the uh, this scene you you are showing us let's talk about can you see here the sun and this is mercury right over there yes. is me uh, venus so uh, mercury is very close to the sun it's around uh, maybe 50, 55 or 56 million kilometers away from the sun. So let's say if Mercury uh, has moon around it, do you think the gravity of the sun will keep the moon to orbit Mercury? No, or it will. Here is the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here is the idea. It will but, attract it because yeah. here in this region, the gravitational pull of sun is incredible it is it is dominating all the area here it will not allow uh, for any object to orbit around another object except it so, so it's kind of competition between yes. uh, the sun and the planets yeah, so, yeah so okay. all the objects here are forced to orbit the sun because it has the upper hand regarding the 
gravitational uh, uh, pull. If we go far away from the sun, the possibility of finding moons around any object is high. The first one, Earth, it's around 150 million kilometers away from the sun, not like Venus or Mercury. And the number of moon is getting higher and higher as we move away from the sun. Of yeah. course, the gravity and the mass of objects uh, ha can also uh, tell us about the number of moons around every object. Yeah, for example, as uh, you said, uh, Mars, it, have, it has two moons uh, called uh, uh, Phobos and Deimos. Yes. And Jupiter, it has more than 80 moons. And so uh, regarding Saturn's so new discovery moons. So now when we talk about moons, now the number is, we, what we say is uh, more than 80 when it comes to Jupiter and Saturn. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, I would like, uh, if you don't mind, to to go to see the 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 moons of Jupiter uh, uh, and Saturn. So let me focus on on Jupiter. I would like to go to Jupiter now and show how the the moons of of Jupiter uh, are there. So let me go to uh, to Jupiter. So please follow me. So we are going directly to Jupiter and its moons. Wow. This is uh, Jupiter. We actually see it from the top the north actually so let me uh, just go a little bit away from the planet so we can see the the moons so those are uh, the the moons actually of jupiter the largest ones only are there uh, we'll just make the the moons uh, bigger than than yeah. how they should look like uh, as you see here, for me, it looks like a mini solar system. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Uh, that there are actually, as I as I mentioned, uh, more than eighty moons, but uh, four of them, four of them only, are very important. Uh, now, uh, I would like to. Uh, just to focus on, on those four moons. Yeah, but now, when, to talk about... These, these uh, are the four moons. Yeah. So even we, we know the names of these moons, these uh, Job moons, they, they have actually names. Of, most of them, they, they got names, actually. Uh, uh, Io, uh, Europa, uh, Ganymede, and Callisto. So these are the, the, the moons orbiting Jupiter. And some of them, for, for example, Ganymede, is even bigger than the, the planet Mercury itself. Bigger than it, believe it or not. So uh, now those are actually the first to discover, to be discovered. Uh, it, th there is a story, you know it, uh, Amr. So could you, could you tell this? We have some kids, is yeah. even I see them, they are... Uh, observing us or they are watching us so please uh, it's good I to tell everyone in, uh, also yeah this. that story actually would take us back to 19 uh, uh, or 1609 when Galileo the famous astronomer the father of uh, modern uh, science that man he used the telescope for the first time to look up before Galileo we used to look up or to, to, to search or to look at the moon by naked eyes. But Galileo developed a tool called telescope. I think everyone now knows what telescope is, but he used uh, his telescope to look at the moon, the moon's phases and Venus also. But when he looked at Jupiter, he saw four uh, bright objects around it. In the first, in the beginning, he thought they are uh, stars because he didn't think that uh, this object which is jupiter 
uh, ha have any moons because at that time all people uh, thought that the earth is the center of the universe and everything is rotating around it you know this story but when he uh, observed the four bright objects time after time for several months he uh, he, he, he saw something uh, amazing the position of those bright objects changing every time and that what stars would not do so he had the only explanation about that he said those must be moons not stars because stars not moving faster like this after that he started to uh, to study them now we have the names those the four moons which uh, Mr. Marwan uh, mentioned named after his name the the Galilean moons so we have Ganymede, Callisto, Europa and Io as Mr. Marwan mentioned Ganymede is bigger than Mercury yes it is and we have two amazing also uh, moons around um, uh, around Jupiter of uh, between or from the the uh, one has water or ice on it and one the most active object in the solar system so I don't know if we have time to get closer to Europa my favorite moon or even Io the most active service in the solar system because it has more than 1600 active volcanoes something amazing to have two moons one is frozen and one is uh, uh, burning okay so i will go now i will take uh, all the audience and uh, the people to the first uh, moon that so this uh, is i i think yes this is I, the I, I o. very simple yeah. two letters i and o look at the surface it looks like a pizza shape oh <laughs> I'm hungry, myself. Yeah, to see some. some... <laughs> I hope to eat. Yes. This one, just think about it. All of uh, these one, if you if you get closer, you can see some of the craters or some of the volcanoes. This one is the most active service in the solar system. I said, I mean, more than sixteen uh, hundred uh, volcanoes. The lava coming from everywhere. This one is incredible uh, object. No one knows from what the source of that volcano or all the moons of Jupiter's um, like like this one or not. But look at the other side. When you look at Europa, another uh, moon of Jupiter, Europa is frozen. Europa yeah. has ice on its surface, approximately the surface of I now we are uh, going to Europa, the the neighbor of, of this Io or the, the moon. So when we look at the surface of Europa, it looks like uh, the, the North Pole because it is frozen. Look at it. Just ice. Uh, yeah. This surface. Um, I'm not sure. This is, uh, yes. So this yeah, one, this the, it has a surface. It has a surface of ice. And beneath the layers of, the, of this ice, scientists uh, think that Europa has ocean of water beneath the ice, the, the ice surface. Very, very amazing. And they, they, uh, they, they are, they, are they, they keep studying this uh, object because once we, we, once we study an object in the solar system, what is the most thing that we are looking for? What, what what do you think? Life, maybe. Yes, life, and what <laughs> what the, the basic the, the building blocks of life. What uh, you need uh, water. water, water. Of need. course, water. So to once help, we find to help life to develop. Yeah. Well, so once once we find any potential sign of water on any object, for us this is amazing, and that that will take our attention, and we will focus on it. Yes. So now I'm taking all the audience to the six planet in the solar system which the one that has uh, uh, rings beautiful rings yes this is saturn saturn actually is very beautiful as you see with the rings 
and there are many moons orbiting. So look, if you see here and there, you see many moons. I would like just to zoom out to see the moons uh, on uh, the orbit. This is the largest moon orbiting uh, Saturn. It's called a Titan. Uh, there are, as I mentioned, more than 80 moons orbiting this large gaseous planet. Uh, and the rings on, on themselves, actually, they con consist of, of trillions of small pieces, uh, uh, maybe this size, uh, from centimeters to meters, but not maybe the house size, uh, building, large building size, but not bigger. This is the, usually the average size of billions of uh, small rocks and or rock or maybe icy rocks uh, orbiting the planet there are many, more than a theory of of them i would like to to go there to see the the uh, the rings that is very beautiful journey when we talk about the rings actually those are the rings you know Let me just go directly to the rings. I would like to mention something here that uh, we are following now the same way uh, that Cassini did uh, after it reached uh, the, uh, the the rings in 2004. Cassini spacecraft, this yes. one, it, it, it was named after Cassini, the man who discovered the, the divergence between, uh, between them, between the, the, the rings, as you see, the black uh, uh, area here. It was discovered by Cassini, one of the famous astronomers. Wait, the yes. yeah, so spacecraft wa was uh, sent to study um, Saturn and its rings because we, we are it was, inside was the rings. Mysterious. Yeah, look, very amazing. Now we will look at the, the rings. We wow. are inside the rings now. Look how uh, beautiful that is! Wow, there are billions of small rocks, as mentioned. Um, really, really beautiful, uh, and uh, this formed uh, someday a big challenge for the spacecrafts when they actually went through that. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, Voyager uh, two, I think, and Cassini as well, the one you mentioned. So let's leave now the the rings and the planets. Let's go uh, away from the solar system let me leave the, this place to see the universe itself we are leaving the solar system we are in the night side of the planet right now Yeah, we still there. This is the planet through the the rings. So our spacecraft is traveling at a very high speed, leaving the rings, Saturn itself. This is Saturn. That is the solar system. Wow, this even Pluto is there. I know the kids love that small object, Pluto, which is now a dwarf planet, not a planet. Now we also we can see the constellations. These are the constellations that we saw before. So those imagine, imaginary lines, that what we call the constellations, actually all that here, it is here uh, to scale, to, to put what we see in to scale to the galaxy, and that forms very small area in the galaxy. All the stars that we see naked by naked eye are only those stars here. The center forms the resembles the, the, the uh, solar system 
and those are lines from the solar system to the closest star to us. So this is the, the largest star that we can see naked eye by naked eye. So you see here the, the uh, galaxy where we left. This is our Milky Way galaxy and it consists of about uh, maybe 200 billions of stars and we see here billions of galaxies. This is our universe. So the question now, we found uh, the first moon orbiting our Earth. And when we, uh, when we invented the first telescope, okay, Galileo used it to find four more moons. When the telescopes became bigger and more precise, we managed to find moons around the other, other planets. When we sent spacecraft to the planets in the solar system, we found more moons and more. Now we have about 200 moons orbiting the, the planets, maybe more, but uh, we have to, to discover, to make better technology to, to see. And we found also planets around the other uh, plan, our other stars in the, in the galaxy. And uh, we found also some moons, we call, we call them exomoons, exoplanets and exomoons. So can you imagine how many planets in the, you know, how many stars in the universe, how many um, exoplanets, how many exomoons? So I will think this for uh, the new generation to think and to search about. So this is our journey, the end of our journey from Sharjah to the outer space by the uh, Sharjah Planetarium uh, uh, from the uh, Sharjah Academy uh, for Astronomy, Spaces and Technology. Uh, I'd like to, to thank you all uh, for watching us and uh, our next uh, journey will take place on Friday, Friday 8 p.m. in Arabic and Saturday at the same time, 8 p.m. in English. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now uh, we will listen to the questions. If there is any questions, uh, please just uh, ask. Uh, we can just raise uh, hand up and uh, Amr, please watch the, the, the participants uh, hands if they are raised uh, to, to call uh, to, so they can uh, yes uh, but I think I cannot have the, the control from uh, your side to let uh, oh, you want to, to talk I, I can see now yes uh, yeah. any questions if, if there's a question just raise hand up yeah I've been reading the comments on uh, this, okay uh, that. so yeah. thank you for everyone who uh, who shared or wrote a great uh, backup for uh, feedback from uh, about us and about the info about the show thanks so much uh, it's now, a thank uh, from the audience okay yeah thank you okay any questions uh, you can go to participant and then you can uh, press on uh, uh, raise hand up can open the the mics actually as well for those who would like to uh, to say something no questions okay thank you very much and see you later thank you Salam alaikum. thanks so much and see you